read 49. I'm about to finish book 50, which would be The Hatmakers, if I remember correctly. I could just check my bullet journal. It's right here. What am I doing doing estimates? I've had such a successful reading weekend. It doesn't look like that on paper. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Leandra the TBR Zero and I am embarking on a journey and that journey is a weekend vlog. <laughs> Wish me luck. I have in the past done vlogs. Uh, way back at the beginning of my channel, I was doing vlogs where I would choose two books that had either a similar theme, setting, concept, author, and then I would just vlog my experience reading those two books in the same month. But this time around, I'm just going to track my reading. I am looking forward to the process, trying to make it as simplistic as possible because vlogs have always really intimidated me, especially with the transitions and everything else. But today is Friday morning. It is June 30th. It is the last day of Pride Month, hence why I'm wearing this shirt, just to, to end the month on a high note. And a lot is happening. I am still reading uh, The Hat Makers, if you've watched any of my content, uh, but my goal is to finish it today, specifically today, because I want it to count towards my June reading total. And it's a middle grade read, fantastical, adventurous, set in kind of an alternate historical London, which is really fascinating. And like the magic, I'm about halfway through, the magic is really kicking up, which is just really fascinating. And that's why I think I'm confident that I could finish it, even though I'm only about this much through. I have 150 pages left. If it were a YA or an adult book, I don't really know if I would feel confident doing that because I do have a busy day today. I work for a podcast called She Done It, where I, I work remotely. So I have to log my hours today for that. I also have some reading sprints later, which is very fun on Sarah's channel over at Sarah Y. I'll make sure to have both that link and oh, well, well, no, it doesn't make sense. This is a weekend vlog. You're not going to see this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll still put a link in for the announcement video and I might as well put a link for the reading sprints if you're interested in watching it not live. But see, this is my whole point of doing a vlog it's like messing with me. I don't really understand how time works anymore. So those are the things I'm going to be doing tonight. Uh, and the reason why I'm going to be on Sarah's sprints is because she's hosting her first ever readathon. It's called Beachathon. It's very, very fun. I'm really excited. It's perfect for summer. And we've got two teams. We've got the Crabs, who is reading when Neva, Neva, and Brittany loves reading, Brittany. <laughs> they are the co host for the Crabs. And then for the Dolphins, it's myself and then Brooklyn from Brooklyn Reads. All four of us, including Sarah, will be probably doing some type of reading sprints for the readathon throughout the month. So by the time this does come out, the month won't be over yet as long as nothing crazy has happened and you'll be able to kind of check out everybody's channels to make sure that that happens. Uh, okay, so yes, goal for today is to honestly head off to a cafe and do my four hours that I tend to do for She Done It on Fridays. And then after that, it's just me and the hat makers for who knows how long. After I got home from doing some she done it work, I ended up taking a shower and I've read about 40 pages of The Hat Makers and that brings me to about 220. And that means a lot's happened in the story so far and really like the premise of this book is that this, this young girl, Cordelia, she is a member of the Hat Maker family. There are makers all about London, boot makers, cloak makers, watch makers, and they pretty much use these very unique ingredients that may cause certain reactions depending on the wearer of these clothes. So for instance, you might make a hat to calm you down if you have nerves, a hat to give you confidence, a hat to make you kinder and more agreeable. And 
uh, Cordelia is very much not allowed to make any hats because she's viewed as too young. She isn't prepared for the trade yet, but they're slowly training her. At the opening of the book, her father goes missing, though. Um, he's lost at sea. Uh, there's this major storm as the book opens, and someone comes to their home to let them know that the ship, uh, the Jolly Bonnet, did not make it into the port safely, and so all are lost. And Cordelia is determined to find her father. She says he's lost. That doesn't mean he's gone. That doesn't mean he's passed away. So throughout the entire book, she is trying to find ways to pretty much find her father. But that's one arc. Another conflict that's going on is that the king seems to have fallen ill. He's fallen into some type of silliness. Like he's just being very silly, very erratic, erratic and just ridiculous and he can't take anything seriously. So they send him off to the seashore to relax. The princess's daughter is now in control and a war is brewing between England and France. And so all of the makers have been asked to make peace clothing. So a peace hat, a peace watch, um, a peace pair of boots. <laughs> and um, Everything is going wrong, though. Thefts are happening, as I discussed, and honestly, I, I'm i adoring it. I'm having so much fun. There are multiple conflicts going on. It's pretty much an overarching mystery, which I love uh, because it's fantastical, but of course, as a, a mystery reader, I love to see that basically the main character has to solve some type of puzzle in order to successfully have everything kind of get back to normal. Um, but yeah, so a lot's happened so far. Um, a really huge event has happened that has pretty much left Cordelia and a couple of her friends alone without any adults really supporting them. And she actually now has to uh, take on the job of making or adding to a certain hat. And she has been told her entire life she's not allowed to make hats. It always goes wrong. It's not safe for her to do it, but basically she has to. There's no other solution, and she has to do it to save her family, to save possibly all of England, uh, especially because the war is coming closer and closer, and if these peace talks don't happen correctly, then, yeah, it's just going to... There are lots on the line, which is pretty impressive for a middle grade read to have so much on the line and for it to all make sense. Uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm very close to the 100 page left mark and then and then I think it'll just be going by really fast until then I actually am gonna go grocery shopping because I don't have any food and then when I get home put the groceries away I'll probably get back into reading this because I would like to make sure that I finish this book while I'm sprinting on Sarah's channel and then I can move on to updating my bullet journal thing that I struggle with most is timing for filling out my bullet journal. So as you can see, I have finished two books and I am usually really good about doing all of this kind of structural skeletal process because all of my reviews look the same. Um, like I've got the same kind of header at the top. I usually include some type of drawing of some sort, my rating, that kind of thing. And then most of the page has to be dedicated to actually reviewing the book. And when I first started bullet journaling, of course, I was far better at reviewing immediately. As soon as I finished a book, I would make sure to actually like write down my review immediately. Then I would remember names, setting, all those important details that I might struggle with even a week or two later because I'm moving on to other reads. And that's something that's really new to me, especially because I was one of those people who would read just a few books a year. And then in the last few years, maybe I think it was 2017 or 2016 that I started pushing myself to read at least 50 books a year and now I'm consistently passing that goal and yeah I did I never really believed people when they said that they had a hard time remembering their books but it's like yeah when you when you're reading upwards of between 50 to 100 books a year and I have 
um, read 49. I'm about to finish book 50, which would be The Hatmakers, if I remember correctly. I could just check my bullet journal. It's right here. What am I doing? Doing estimates. Yeah, so The Hatmakers is going to be book 50. So that means I've read 50 books in six months, which is definitely a privilege. It speaks to how many audiobooks I've been listening to this year as well. So yeah, um, but I'm trying to get better about at least reviewing the book I've read like within a week because I also they see a negative aspect of doing it right away because you're kind of running on adrenaline, running on excitement. One of the books that I showed that I have to write a review for still is What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall that just came out in January 2023 and I instantly gave it four stars and I'm definitely not regretting that because I came in not understanding anything. I had such a good time with the audiobook. The narrator did such a good job. I had a lot of fun talking about it with the friend who recommended the book to me. We passed, you know, discussion points back and forth. So it was just a really enjoyable experience. 100% worth the four star read for me. But obviously, as soon as I finished, I talked with other people, letting them know what I have been reading. And a few people, including Brittany from Brittany Loves Reading, had mentioned that uh, this title has a bit of contention, especially in the community of readers who really adore thrillers and really enjoy true crime. Uh, this was a really big case. I'm not going to mention what the case is. If you're interested in getting that kind of spoiler, go for it. But apparently some readers, including Brittany, as soon as they started reading the book, they they thought of this true crime case and then they realized that there are quite a few parallels. I will say there's a, quite a few differences about this as well um, because as soon as I heard about this parallel after finishing the book, uh, my friend who had recommended the book to me did a deep dive and we totally talked about the case and compared the books and so I think we at least really appreciate the fact that there are some differences and we just enjoyed the experience altogether. Um, but yeah, so I have to now make that review but I'm really glad I didn't review it right away that I got this background information because I think it just enriches the time I was reading this so then when I reread this review you know when I want to reminisce at some point I can be like oh that's right I remember all of the backstory about this book after I finished and I just I I like being able to get some context from other people and it, it, it doesn't impact my rating I'm not going to change my rating because my experience is my experience but I think it makes it a bit more fascinating. So I am going to finally fill in uh, and then it'll be up to date at least until I finish The Hatmakers and then at least when it comes to finishing June, all I have to do is write that review if I want to because I don't review every single book that I read in my bullet journal, include my uh, monthly superlatives. If you're interested in seeing what that even entails, what that means, I will make sure to hopefully at some point include a um, link to the video that will showcase all six months of my journal. That's another kind of mid-year book, bookish video that I have in my head. And I want to wait until I've finished all of my spreads for June and then create a mid-year spread where I kind of reflect on my statistics and, and look at all the different nooks and crannies of what was going on in the last six months. And I had a really good time doing that last year, so I'm going to do it again. But this vlog, I'm hoping, is going to be out before that happens. So just, just wait and see if you don't see a link in my description. Good morning! It is Saturday. Friday night was filled with busy fun stuff so I did end up going grocery shopping and I don't think I mentioned this in any other update but I on the drive I ended up starting Viviana Valentine Goes Up River as an audiobook. I borrowed it through Libby and I listened to the first book in this series by Emily J. Edwards. It's called A Girl Friday Mysteries set in New York City during 1950s. Viviana is a firecracker. I absolutely love her. <laughs> She's so fun. She makes me think of like uh, Mrs. M uh, Maisel and like a His Girl Friday mashup of characters. So if you're really into that kind of era, 
listen. This is what you need to start reading or listening to. And I have the second book technically as an Ekele arc, but because I'm behind, <laughs> the audiobook came out. So I'm already listening to that. And then I also have the third book accepted on NetGalley. So once I catch up, then I'll read that one physically as an ebook. But anyway, so during Sarah's sprints for Beachathon, it was so much fun. Uh, a lot of people were showing their support for various teams. So we were seeing dolphins in the comments, we were seeing crabs in the comments. And so I just had a really good time and I'm really excited to be a co-captain for the dolphin team and, and hopefully keep up the momentum throughout the month. I ended up also finishing, not during sprints, but within the hour that I left, uh, The Hat Makers by Tamsin Merchant. And this is this ended up growing on me. Like I enjoyed the entire process, but it became like, I was even more invested. I was having even more fun. The, the different kind of puzzle pieces that were coming together were making me appreciate the book even more because I was in between a four and a five star rating. And now I'm gonna give it five stars. I just, I, I really enjoyed it. It was really magical and fun. And Cordelia was such a great protagonist to follow. And the way it ended, I'm really excited for book two, The Map Makers. We'll see when I get to it, but I, I'm really excited. So I ended up giving this five stars, but I will say one thing. <laughs> it, this book and many others that I've recently read have made me realize that I have an aversion to like head injuries uh, in books. So Cordelia, you know, she's, she's in this chase scene, she's running around and she ends up like hitting her head and she starts to see kind of stars. And I was like, oh my gosh, Cordelia, her brain isn't even fully developed yet. She's only a child. And I think earlier this month, this happened in Dead Silence to the main character. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, these people, we need to protect our brains. Like, I think that injury is the scariest to me in books. So I'm a bit more sensitive uh, now that I'm reading them more and more. Anyway, uh, I also realized last night that I may have um, overcommitted myself to the number of books that I am planning on reading in July, the number of events and buddy reads that I'm doing, but you know what? We're going to power through. So not only am I going to hopefully be participating as much as I can as a captain in Beachathon, I also want to participate to the fullest in the mid-year uh, scram reading scramble. Uh, this is a readathon that is hosted by Margaret over at the Word Nerd, and I love that she's got various prompts, like various maps, depending on what your goal is. And so there is one specifically for your physical TBR, and I'm very much determined to finish that. And then that can kind of make sure that I'm still really reading a lot of books on my physical TBR, even as I have library books and and neck alley arcs and physical arcs all over the place. So for that, the first prompt is like reading your shortest book. And I'm not really sure if this is my shortest, but it's very short. And I think the shortest I could get before that is maybe like a poetry collection, which I do have a few of those, but I just wasn't feeling it. Uh, and so I've got Bluettes and this is by Maggie Nelson. I think she also came out with one that's about red. This is about the color blue and it's kind of in vignette format. It's described as essays. But it's so much more than her talking about the color blue. There are there is a lot of like scientific historical facts in here, which I'm really enjoying. Like I already knew this, but I loved that she included this. Uh, so Sir Isaac Newton was really fascinated by colors and like eyesight and things like that on top of everything else he was doing. And so he was known for actually prodding his own eyes with like rods and other things to then measure the reactions that could happen to his vision, which is honestly a little unhinged. But it's just, it's really fascinating. Uh, she also has a lot of personal anecdotes in here about her own, like, a past relationship that ended poorly, about her own sexuality and, like, I don't know, the sexuality of women, the female gaze, on top of everything else. So I, I definitely can recommend it, especially people who might want to read a nonfiction, but they're a bit nervous about, say, like, a 300-page nonfiction. This is not even 100 pages. And I'm 25% of the way through, meaning I've read 25 pages. And it's just, it's a really quick read. It's really refreshing. And it, I'm going to feel accomplished that I've already finished a book uh, for my physical TBR uh, this month. Oh my gosh, I still have so many other books. This is my, this is my point. So the reason why I'm feeling overwhelmed is because I have li a library read that I must finish soon. And that is Emily Henry's Happy Place. I say finish. I haven't even started it yet. It's due next week, I think on like the 6th of July. And oh my gosh, there's like eight people waiting for it. So like, that's also why it's not like I can renew it, push it off. I would feel really badly if I didn't bring it back when I was supposed to. 
I, and it's perfect for Beaches On too. I also have this subscription to um, the Mysterious Bookshop and every month we get a golden age detective fiction novel by an American writer during the 20th century and this is Blind Man's Bluff by Baynard Kendrick and I've been trying to have the goal I started this goal last month so it's very fresh I am one for one and that is reading the book before the next book arrives in my subscription that's just again keeping myself up to date and not just like being a part of a subscription and then proceeding to put the book on the shelf and not really read it. I just don't think that really makes sense if you're a part of subscription, at least for me. I really want to make sure I'm reading this as soon as it comes. So I just got this this week and I am going to be prioritizing that too. And finally, uh, what I'm actually going to be starting today, so this is very much pertinent to the weekend vlog, is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. It is the first book in the Broken Earth trilogy. I'm really excited because this is the second month in a row that I'm doing a buddy read with Danny over at Danny Dabbles, and I'm really glad we're reading it together because this one I think is going to need having someone to talk through some of these complicated aspects. I've heard that it's a pretty complex uh, fan fantasy sci-fi kind of book. I should know more. I'm so sorry to those who've read this and they're like, Leander, why are you, you're not prepared? <laughs> you're not mentally or emotionally prepared for this book if you barely can even say what kind of genre it is. But we're doing like two to three chapters a day, taking our time with it, our sweet time. And because of the weekend, we both agreed that today we'd do three chapters. So I'll definitely be vlogging about that. Oh my gosh, I haven't even talked about the like the E arcs that have gotten through NetGalley, the physical arcs that have been sent to me over the past few months that are coming up to publication day. I also have a stack of promotional reads that I have received for publishers, um, which I'm really grateful for, but I guess what's nice is there's flexibility in whether I uh, like post about them just that I'm excited about them or I can post a review. I try to post reviews because I feel like that's, that's obviously the ideal thing for like publishers and for the author they want reviews they don't want just a promotional like yay this looks like a fun book but I am afraid that I'm gonna have to just do a promotional read for this one Inkblood Sister Scribe by Emma Torres I received this and I'm scheduled to post about it next Thursday I think or next Friday and I just I know I'm not gonna get to it with everything else I'm doing but I will prioritize reading it as soon as I can it just it won't be by the deadline other books that I'm hoping this month to read include uh, A Guide to the Dark by Miriam Matui. Uh, it's a YA fantasy kind of maybe paranormal. I was really excited because I'm pretty sure it's got LGBT plus and it involves ghosts and everything else and I'm really excited about that. I was also gifted A Song to Salvation by Alechia Doe, another YA fantastical read. And then finally the last month that I said yes to for um, publisher sending it to me was Capture the Sun by Jesse Mahalik. And this one, unfortunately, is book three in the series. So I need to read the first two first. What am I doing? I don't know. I promise, hopefully this is going to be the only scattered section of this vlog. But just, I don't know, pray for me. <laughs>
it is Saturday evening. <laughs> it's actually a bit later than the evening. It's after 11 p.m. I am getting ready for bed, but I thought I'd do a check-in before I finally went to sleep. And I've had quite a busy but also relaxing night after watching Margaret the Word Nerd's opening sprints for her mid-year reading scramble. I then immediately jumped on to Carissa, Lovable Readers, first ever reading sprints. It was really nice to be able to participate in that and she did a great job. I highly recommend you all go subscribe to her and click notify me for all of her reading sprints that she's already scheduled for July because it was just a really nice relaxing time and super low key. So yeah, recommend it. So during her sprints, I actually ended up finally starting The Fifth Season by M.K. Jemison. This, this book has been on my TBR, my physical TBR shelves for years, so many years. And I'm so glad that Danny and I are reading it together. We read the prologue and then the first two chapters today she sent me voice messages over Instagram. I sent her voice messages back. And it, it's just, it's really complicated, but in such a good way, it's really rich. It's making us ask questions that I think are increasing our investment in the entirety of the narrative. We are in this fantastical world. There's this lovely map at the beginning of the book. There's a glossary at the end, and it's quite complex. We've got this cast system of seven different cast tiers. There's the resistance, there's the strongbacks, the innovators, and we, we haven't even gotten <laughs> to all of them yet. There's the um, origins, which are this kind of powerful group of people who are connected to the earth, who can make the earth shake, who can sense when the earth is beginning to shake. And it's just, it's really interesting to learn the political system and where everyone is in this world. And you do have to kind of trust yourself because I feel like N.K. Jemisin trusts us to like listen, to take the time to pay attention as she slowly provides the groundwork with every beginning chapter. We're, we're still getting to know every single player. We've got different perspectives. She's playing with perspectives. We got the second person. We are following this character, Essen. And then the next character, we were following Demaya, who's this young girl. And it's just, it's really vivid and really nice. But I, I am very much <laughs> glad that I have someone to talk through because both of us were passing questions back and forth. And we're, we're only now, after the second chapter, feeling a bit better about like knowing how the world works. But that just makes me more excited and, and yeah, like willing to figure out what is going on because some major events happened in regards to this huge earthquake that shook everyone that I'm pretty sure was caused by an origin. And we're not sure what his motivations were, but it's caused devastation across the land. And yeah, like I'm, I'm really interested to see what happens next as the stillness, this particular season, this particular era in this world seems to be coming to an end and we'll see what the next one ends up being. Uh, beyond that, I also ended up updating my bullet journal. As you saw, I enjoyed myself while watching, re-watching for the millionth time, um, My Man Godfrey. It is one of my favorite movies of all time. And it's just, it's lovely. Like, it's, it's such a fun movie. We've got William Powell, who's honestly this like debonair, like very attractive man. Like, I actually am so attracted to him. He's like amazing. And uh, his co-star is also lovely. Apparently they actually were married before this film and then divorced. And when William Powell was up for this role, he said, hey, you, you really should check her out uh, because she would be a lovely co-star, even though she was his divorce, like divorced wife at the time, his ex-wife. And I just, I really appreciate that they still had professional courtesy and so much respect for each other's abilities. And they were able to, still play like romantic roles for each other. I just, it's amazing. Anyway, so while I was doing that, I ended up updating my bullet journal, kind of finally cleaning things up for the June. I wrote Hat Makers, that review. I also did all my June superlatives. I wrote my July monthly spread as well. And then tomorrow I'm going to finally do my mid-year check-in where I do two spreads, like two pages worth of information. I'm going to record that for a video. And uh, tonight, though, I'm going to return to Bluettes because I am 60 pages in. 
and I really don't have that much left. Well, I probably won't finish it tonight, but I am enjoying it so far. It's fascinating. There was a lot of grief in it, and the author is 100% dealing with her own emotions, dealing with um, depression as well, which is um, just a really good representation, and her not shying away from it. A friend of hers also ended up experiencing this accident where she um, is now a paraplegic um, or a quadriplegic um, and she's helping her and it's just it's really fascinating the fact that this book stems from her fascination with blue but her ability to connect it to so many aspects of her life so yeah we'll see how I feel about it once I finish the book overall but I, I am really appreciative that I'm finally reading it and it's all thanks to uh, the mid-year reading scramble again hosted by Margaret so Either way, uh, this is me signing off and I will see you in the morning. Bye, good night. Good morning, it is a rainy Sunday. So I thought I would spend the morning kind of organizing my apartment, finally, doing this one project on this wall that I have been neglecting and I have a few updates. So I have 30 pages left in Bluettes. I plan on finishing it today because it's actually quite short. I don't think I've ever shown it, but it's like written in all this like vignette kind of formatting. And so it really is a quick nonfiction like read. I then have to catch up with the fifth season. I did end up getting to chapter two, as I said last night, but now it's a new day. So Danny and I have to do our next installment of chapters. I'm assuming because it's the weekend, we're still gonna do three chapters, but I'm gonna check in with her before I make any plans because I don't wanna get ahead of her. That's the opposite of what I wanna do. And then, because I'll be finishing Bluettes, and I, this is a long haul project for the fifth season, I might start a new fiction book uh, but also continue Islands of Abandonment. This is a nonfiction book that is actually so good. It's really fascinating. Um, it focuses on like areas, parks, abandoned kind of like natural reserves that were once inhabited by humans, mistreated by humans, and then somehow nature finds a way, which is lovely. And yeah, I have to figure out what other fictional read I might want to read. <laughs> I've got a huge stack of books right here that are <laughs> priority reads, but we'll see what I end up choosing. Uh, in the meantime, while I'm doing my project um, on this wall, I actually am going to continue listening to Viviana Valentine Goes Up River. I'm 20% in now and I am just, I'm still enjoying it. And also just got a little bit more exciting. An event happened the first night at the mansion and what's great is Viviana's boss slash now he's a partner I guess in this book uh Tommy he arrives on the scene and so they're kind of investigating together and now they need a cover and so Tommy just showed her a ring and now their cover is going to be that they're married and I, the romantic side of me is like so excited because in the first book I felt like there was chemistry, but they never really addressed it, and Viviana had a different kind of love interest, uh, but now I'm like, oh my gosh. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to listen to that while I'm doing this project. You're probably wondering, what is this project? Well, I have um, these really cool postcard size like designs or illustrations by this Etsy artist, Lizzie Glass, and they're like a series of different types of readers. So this one's the one more page. This one says the cereal starter and there's like all these books on top and they're just, they're, they're really gorgeous. Uh, and what I wanna do is keep them up, but every other book I want to, like every other illustration, I wanna include one of these postcards that have this like beautiful botanical kind of garden. So it's gonna go like that. And then I'll have this one be replaced by a flower. And I think I'm gonna do another row. Uh, yeah, so I'm really excited about that. Basically the back, we just use these, uh, what are they called? Command strips. So I hopefully don't damage the wall. Um, I did have to do a little bit of work though. They had these little like metal clips for if you wanted to hang them on like a nail. So I had to <laughs> DIY remove them. And now I'm, yeah, just having them match so that they can match up evenly. 
Uh, but yeah, that, that's what I'm going to be doing while listening to Viviana Valentine. We made it! It is Sunday evening. The weekend is ending. It's about eight o'clock here. I am currently in between two reading sprints. We've got Brittany over at Brittany Loves Reading. And on top of that, Nicole is doing her typical sprints over on Dusty Book Sniffers. And to support both, I have them on separate tabs. And we're in a sprint for both, which is perfect timing. And to give you a bit more of an update on like how I ended my Sunday, I did, as you saw, end up picking up Emily Henry's Happy Place. I kind of realized after my last update that this obviously was the natural <laughs> next choice when I finished Bluettes because in another update I mentioned that the library is on my doorstep. I just got an email this morning reminding me that it's due in three days. There was a laundry list of people waiting for this title. I think about eight people in my library system are on hold for it. So I really, I can't renew it. And I would feel too badly if I withheld this book from anyone else. So it's going to have to be a priority. I got 50 pages in and I'm really enjoying it. I wasn't really sure what I'd think because this is my first Emily Henry read. Even though a friend recommended it to me, it's also my first second chance romance. And I really wasn't sure how I'd feel about that trope. But Harriet and Wynne are really fascinating characters. They are in this friend group that has lasted a decade and they are ex-fiancés now. It's very awkward, it's very uncomfortable, but their friend group doesn't know because they've arrived at this last bash last week at this beach house that they've gone to, again, for basically a decade altogether. Uh, Harriet and Wynne don't wanna <laughs> ruin the mood, so they have to kind of play the part, pretend that they're really close. And it's been really fascinating because there was like a dual timeline before they got together, we're seeing how those pieces came together. And then the aftermath, now that they are ex-fiancés. And oh my gosh, I'm really intrigued to see why their relationship fell apart. Because they do seem so sweet in, in like the flashbacks together. I also am really intrigued to see how Harriet particularly deals with this. Because it's Wynn who broke up with her, who ended their engagement. And on top of that... Apparently, he is known for being very touchy. He's a very physical person in their relationship, so their friends expect him to be touching her all the time, and Harriet's really hesitant and nervous about how that's going to make her feel. So I just, I'm really invested already. I'm literally so invested in Harriet and seeing how she navigates these things and how she and Wynne kind of, I don't know, open up to each other. Maybe there was some miscommunication that led to their original ending of things but either way I've had such a successful reading weekend it doesn't look like that on paper because I technically only finished two out of the let's see Bluettes, Hatmakers, Fifth Season, Viviana Valentine Goes Up River, Happy Place. Out of five books I finished two of them and we can't forget that I also have this other book that I've been reading Islands of Abandonment that I really haven't been focusing on this weekend but I'm determined to get to it so I think actually once I close this vlog. I, I will actually be picking up Islands of Abandonment because I'm I'm always really worried reading nonfiction. If I put it down for too long, I won't really feel the motivation to pick it back up. So I want to make sure that I actually get back into that because I'm halfway through that. Oh my gosh. Uh, I don't know how chaotic this uh, <laughs> vlog ended up being. I kept forgetting my plans and then letting you know that I ended up doing different things. 
like I was supposed to record my like bullet journal walkthrough today but I didn't uh and yesterday I don't think I mentioned but I did record my June wrap up and then I did some editing today for that oh, I, hopefully I get better at this or maybe this is just demonstrating how scattered my brain is and I'm really bad at actually following a strong to-do list even though I love making to-do lists so anyway if you've made it to the end thank you so much for surviving my first weekend vlog because I'm sure it was really chaotic and uh if you enjoyed the experience just consider liking consider subscribing because I'm sure it's not going to improve anytime soon it's going to continue to be chaotic with every vlog I make and hopefully I'll I won't be scared off uh, the, hopefully the editing process won't scare me off in doing another vlog because I think that's the most intimidating part for me. But yes, in the comments, let me know how your weekend went. Let me know if you have any particular thoughts about the books I've mentioned. I did mention a lot. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video really soon. Bye!